Hello, 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 and welcome to this week's edition of Revved Up. My name is Andrew Kabora, welcoming you to a show that now goes deeper and deeper when it comes to everything the motoring world. On the show tonight, we keep you very, very safe. And you're probably wondering why it's the simple, same point I kick off with every time, every single week. It's because we need to be safe. The motoring world is one that we always enjoy, but it's also one that we need to be very careful with. So many accidents being reported in the papers and television recently, and hey, we are saying be a good driver also on the show tonight we take you to the feature show you a beautiful futuristic car hey you might not drive it but you'll be very excited to actually finally see it and as we enjoy the backdrop that is the lake victoria it also confirms that we are at the lake victoria serena golf resort and spa beautiful place you probably need to come down to but What's quite interesting about tonight's show is uh, we've succumbed to pressure. Yes, we've succumbed to pressure as the Revved Up crew because we've been receiving lots and lots of inbox from you, our beautiful audience, about two specific cars from last season that you feel you need to see a little bit more. One of those is one of the more recent cars. Beautiful, very spacious, very intelligent. The other one is a super classic. They're both coming up on the show tonight. Once again, my name is Andrew Kabura. Welcome aboard. This is Revved Up. This edition of Revved Up. Now, as I said in the introduction, there's been lots of reaction on our social media from you, our beautiful audience, about these two specific cars. They ran last season, but a couple of folks felt they did not watch enough of those very cars or they did not watch them enough to actually make a decision on whether they liked or actually wanted to buy any of those cars. So, as promised, we pay back. We bring you the two cars. We kick off with one of the more recent cars on Ugandan roads, the 2017 Kia Sportage. One of the more technologically advanced cars. I hope you do like it, because we did like it. Take a look at our shoot. Road Review, brought to you by NC Bank. This is the Kia Sportage 2017. The exterior is truly mesmerizing. A vision that you could gaze at for hours on end. The vehicle screams sport and adventure, but it is combined with an air of professionalism and superiority that would enable the most powerful men and women in the country to drive it with pride. All right, so I'm reading off a document here and they say the tagline for the Kia Sportage is uh, refinement redefined. And that is the reason I'm joined by Mr. Joseph Semwemba, who is the CEO of uh, the Motor Center East Africa, the distributors of Kia vehicles here. Yeah? First of all, thank you very much and uh, welcome again thank you. to our set. Thank you. Refinement redefined. Yeah. Uh, it, was that the best tagline in your view, having had a, a, a feel of the car? Yeah, I would say yes, um, for, for one reason. It's a total, total turnaround mm. from the, what we've been used to with the 2016, 2015 uh, Kia Sportage. Yeah. That was known for elegance, beauty and uh, uh, style. The car has been made 40 millimeters longer, 20 millimeters wider. Mm. Uh, you will see that there's a complete turnaround. The, curves around it, the sportier look, I mean everything is very 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 different. Uh, Kike has emphasized um, the whole issue of experience, yeah. uh, but what's experience without sitting inside? So I think what we're going to try to do is to go inside the car, uh, the Sportage 2017, and show you what exactly has improved, how much of an experience are you going to enjoy, how, uh, how comfortable will you be in the car, and how safe, how safe will you be? Joseph, thank you very much. Thank you. Let's go into the car and see what's happening. The adventure continues inside the new and improved Sportage with the panoramic sunroof immediately catching the eye. The gorgeous leather trim gives this vehicle the style that it deserves. It comfortably seats five people, supplying them with generous headroom and legroom. All right, so we're on the inside now. The first thing you will realize is that uh, it's all about the driver. The driver's comfort is everything in the Kia Sportage 2017. First of all, let's start off with the dashboard. It's more flat compared to the 2015 edition. And then there's a tilt. There's, an, there's, there's a little bit tilt in the angle towards the driver. Now that helps you in one or two major things. First of all, is your left hand is, uh, 
easy to access everything you want here whether it's your ac whether it's your big touch screen which should come with some uh, entertainment and the reverse camera angle as well and then it's got its beautiful armrest so you can probably relax as you drive it's, it's got some components of a racing car so you've got a d-shaped steering wheel i'm sure you've seen this with most of the uh, race cars all right now this car can take you to any kind of condition probably anywhere in the country that is why it's got the ventilated seats uh, they can they can warm you up we can also have a little bit of the cold air as well in case you're feeling hot through them not bad <laughs> one of the few things you can just do is just smile uh, you almost don't feel like you're off the tarmac now one of the things that everyone has been asking is if it's good on the road and good off the flat off-road how good is it climbing especially a hill or something hilly that could have some stones something stony are we going to skid are we going to struggle going up that's my final try with this very car uh, so let's go and see exactly that <laughs> nice 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 i was going up but i felt like it was flat and uh even though i can see the potholes i really cannot feel the potholes the 2017 sportage is doing well on and off the road but more importantly like kia have said over the years it's about the driver's experience so inside i'm as comfortable as i can get i have my beautiful ac i can access everything on the dashboard i have a d for a steering wheel i have all my controls on the steering wheel i can rest my arm on the outside big wheels comfortable on and off the road i did not skid you just saw that so beautiful machine it's difficult to believe that this is the same model of car that was previously featured because it has been so vibrantly transformed on the inside and outside however if you look closely, you will recognize the same marks of excellence that Kia is known for. Only this time, they've set the bar at an even higher standard than usual. Car Care, brought to you by Toyota Uganda. Welcome to this week's car care. Now this week we talk car fluids, we talk oil, we talk engine oil. Sweetsum is the training manager here at Toyota. I want to ask you about three questions in a row so you, you can answer all of them at once. The relevance of oil to our cars, engine oil, mm -hmm. where an oil filter is located and by the way, when do we replace it and if we do not, how much trouble are we in? Uh, let me start answering your questions one by one, if yes. I can remember. <laughs> Please. Number one was, oil. why do we have oil in the engine? Yes. Oil is used for lubricating the components of the engine. Mm. You know, now the components of the engine are running at a very high speed. Eh? In addition to lubricating those components, oil is also used to cool the components of the engine. Mm. So that oil has to constantly be Filter. filtered. So the oil filter is very important. Mm. Otherwise, oil which is not cleaned will go into the components of the engine and your engine will not have as long life as you would expect it from okay so the oil filter is very important thing it's located in the lubrication system of the vehicle between the oil pump and the components that are being lubricated yeah, it is the big issue though uh, because folks don't usually see the oil filter every now and then when they go out there to buy oil filters, instead of coming to Toyota Uganda, so you actually get the legitimate oil filter, you go and get a fake one, which is an equivalent of a, of a clogged one. I think let's just take a look at the oil filters and know which oil filter is actually fake. If I just could have that, please. Yes, thank you very, very much, Fitzum. I think I should hand you this. Okay. This, so these are two oil filters. Uh, we should probably talk about the fake and the genuine, and you can explain to us how we identify any of the two. Wonderful. If I show you like this, externally, the two oil filters look the same, right? 
But when you turn them and see the internal components of the filters, yes. you'll obviously see some difference. You can see the filtering element is different. Any layman can now sh tell you the, the details of these two are different and you can easily see that this is a genuine filter, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Whereas this is a fake filter. Mm -hmm. And remember what we said, this oil filter, or the oil is subjected to a very high temperature, okay? Actually, in some cases we have found that this filtering element has completely dissolved into the oil, mm -hmm. which means you don't have any filtering element anymore. Mm -hmm or that filtering element will have gone into the components of the engine and cause more damage to your engine, mm. okay? So when you fit a filter, you better fit a genuine filter. I promise you, Andrew, the price difference is very little compared to what you have invested Impact. on your car yeah. and to the performance of the engine, mm. okay? How do you identify whether it's a genuine or non-genuine? You cannot go to the market and and ask the guy to open it and up. you open it up it will not be used <laughs> yes, anymore yes. you have to pay him uh, anyway yeah. but to be sure you come to toyota uganda mm. get your genuine filter fitted in your vehicle mm. and also please make sure that it is fitted by a qualified technician so everything is fine yeah. Fitzum, thank you very much I, I think that's a very big issue and i think he explains it very well you're not going to go anywhere and easily identify which one is fake and which one is genuine because you're not going to always open them up so save yourself all the trouble come to toyota uganda get yourself a genuine oil filter because like he says clean oil into your engine is just as important as anything else otherwise you'll be wasting the most important part of your very car feel free as well to send us those emails it is talk to toyota which is t2t at toyota.co.ug the subject is revved up Fitsu and I, the two experts, will always answer your questions. Thank you very much, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you very much, Fitsu. Futuristic Vehicles, brought to you by Shell V Power. Since 2016, we've been eagerly awaiting news of the highly anticipated Aston Martin Valkyrie, promoted by their brand as the ultimate hypercar. Over the year, mere speculation has changed into more reliable data, and the specs that have been released are impossibly astonishing. This hypercar has an astounding power to weight ratio of 1 to 1, as the 1,130 horsepower produced by this machine's 6.6-litre V12 engine actually exceeds the Valkyrie's curb weight of 1,030 kilograms. The most incredible aspect, however, is that this car will be entirely road legal, although the price tag will limit its appearance on the streets. The cabin of the Valkyrie is minimalist to the extreme, as every feature of the interior and exterior of the car has been designed to help it lose as much weight as possible. In fact, there are no side or rear view mirrors. They've been replaced by tiny cameras to assist the driver instead. Most of the controls can be found on the steering wheel, which is detachable to aid entry and exit from the vehicle's gull wing doors. This hypercar has been stripped down so completely that even the metal Aston Martin badge on the front of the car is considered too heavy and has been replaced with an aluminium badge that is only 70 microns thick or 30% thinner than a human hair. The price of such speed and power will make the Valkyrie truly unique. It will cost $3 million to buy one of these machines and up till the present moment, it has not yet been shown in public, only at exclusive Aston Martin events. They hope to have a track-ready model by 2018, and from the information available, it certainly seems to exceed all expectations and live up to its claim of being the ultimate hypercar.
Welcome back from that break. Now, before the break, we had talked about revisiting two cars here on Revved Up. And we've already revisited one. That is uh, the 2017 Kia Sportage. Second car that we are revisiting tonight is a classic. And as promised, here it is from 1967, The Beetle. You see, I've been standing here for approximately a minute for research. I don't know if you've heard about uh, research that takes a minute. Well, we've done research here that takes a minute. And I've just been looking at Kampala's traffic, so trying to find out which car is most popular on these streets. And you see, in our certified research of one minute, we've discovered that uh, the Premium is probably the most popular on these roads. And I think it's, it's easy to explain. Maybe it's down to how much you can buy, the fuel uh, and the maintenance as well. So it's fair to say the Premium is the car for the masses here. Yeah. Or you even could say it is the people's car. The only problem is, if you say it is the people's car, a certain group of people in Europe will not be happy because there is something else called the people's car. Which people are those? The Germans. Ladies and gentlemen, the Volkswagen Beetle. Now, after successfully completing my German classes, I, I have found out that Volkswagen means people's car, which is exactly what Adolf Hitler wanted. You know who Adolf Hitler is. So back in the 1930s, uh, the boss in Germany said uh, that, you know, he wanted a car that all the masses would enjoy and picked a super designer then called uh, Ferdinand Porsche. Uh, the instructions were very clear. First of all, he wanted a car that looked like this, like a Beetle. You see, Adolf Hitler had uh, a history of loving nature, so he decided to pick on a small, little, ugly insect for a car. And this is what exactly they came up with. It's probably the world's most recognizable car, because over 21 million of this very car have been produced. But when he gave the engineer the order, he gave him a couple of instructions. Certain things had to be done for the car, because it was going to be a masses car, a people's car. He wanted a cheap and easy to maintain car. Gave him a couple of instructions as well and told him the car should sit five people, two adults and three children. Also told him the car must uh, speed up to 100 kilometers an hour, but, but, and this is where the people's car really comes uh, into effect, the car must not use more than seven liters for every 100 kilometers. German had a new road network, and this is what was produced, ladies and gentlemen. It might be an ugly insect, but it's a beautiful car. Right, so the man responsible for taking us almost five decades back is Mr. Katamjuna Edgar. How are you? I'm fine, thank, thank you. Thank you very, very much for coming to our set. You're welcome. Did you manage to drive this year or did you lift it here? Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> You're not uh, that old a man. Uh, this is a car from 1967. Why on earth, why on earth would you have this car today? Well, they're very ordinary not complicated, easy to use, and very good on fuel. You know, and uh, the suspension is better than these, you know, new ones. Mm -hmm. I have uh, four others, four other Beatles. I have a Combi too, and um, I use them for weddings, music videos, mm. kwanjulas, mm. birthdays, mm. honeymoons. First of all, we need to take a quick look at the inside. Like we said, most of these are uh, old cars, the classic cars are completely different. They're so basic, you probably would be shocked if you have never stepped in any. Let's go on the inside and see. Hey, what was the plan? What was the plan when they were doing, constructing these cars on the inside? Come, let's take a look. Now, I want to take you through what each of these buttons really means, so you can understand what 1967 looked like. For starters, your headlights, your headlamps, these are your lights right here. So how do you do it? You just pull and pull. These days you twist, but you just pull. So let's switch them off. That aside, you've got your hazards. This is your hazards. Uh, most of the folks in Uganda will say double indicators. <laughs> uh, these are your hazards, so you take them off. It's as simple as that. It's got a little, it's not even a button. It's like a racing car kind of switch. It's right here. So I'm going to switch on the radio and you have to listen very carefully. 
if you can understand this. There you go. I don't like the song and it's not even German, but can you imagine the kind of music they were listening to in this car back in 1967? This model from 1967 has a 1.3 litre engine that provides 52 horsepower and is paired with a four-speed manual gearbox. These may seem like unimpressive numbers when compared to some of today's speed machines, but the first Beatles were only allowed to have 25 horsepower, as that was the speed restriction of the time. This two-door, unobtrusive vehicle was designed for the average working family, and it's clear to see that the Volkswagen Beetle fits this description perfectly. So, what we decided to do, because it's a very old car, but he claims, he claims, he's maintained it very well. We have decided to do a race, man against car, me against car. I will not even put on official truck costume, because it's too slow. It's too slow for me. Oh man, that was quite an exercise. Look, I think it's only fair to say me and the Beatles finished at the same time. If it's that old and can still run as good as me, as an unfit me, unfit please, keep that word, unfit me. It means that uh, when I grow old, I will not match its power and its speed. And trust me, it will keep that powerful. So even though I'm ashamed, I'm happy I lost such a beast. It's bye. Good night. It is truly a beloved classic car and one that's difficult to find fault with because its quiet charm and simple nature is a breath of fresh air from all the increasingly complex and supercharged cars of this century. It may not be your cup of tea, but the Volkswagen Beetle has earned its spot on the timeline of automobile history and will hopefully continue to grace our streets for many generations to come. All right, thank you very much guys for joining us tonight. Always, always, always a pleasure having you for an audience. I hope you've also loved our two revisits tonight. My name is Andrew Kabora. Good night. See you next week. Next week on Revved Up.